I don't even know what the story's about yet. All right, so I'm gonna present my screen. The new story should be posted. It's called. Were we supposed to turn in that story yesterday? You can if you if you're all done with all the questions, you can get it turned in. Yeah. Okay, so it should be posted. What was it called? The girl who gets gifts from birds. Couldn't remember what it was called. So we're gonna go ahead and get that one opened up. There we go. It's a shorter story this time. Um, probably only about seven minutes long. We're going to go over the background and who the author is and all of that stuff. Um, just based on the title, does anybody um, think they might know what the story is about? I haven't read it yet. So what do you guys think? Uh, that there's a girl and birds give her gifts. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Any other ideas? I don't think I have really any other ideas either yet. We'll have to see. Maybe after we read the background information, we'll get a couple more ideas. But we'll see. So I'm going to give you guys about a minute, and you guys can get that pulled up. Check my Go Guardian. Most of you guys are getting it pulled up. Awesome. And if it takes a while to load, that's okay. We're going to read through it first. So while it's loading, you can be watching my screen instead if it's not loading quickly for you. I know that that can be a struggle sometimes. This program uses a lot of internet, so sometimes it just doesn't want to load. It happens to me. Like if I'm trying to grade things at home, it just won't load for me at home. And I'm like, well, I guess I got to do that at school. So it happens if it's not loading. All right. Okay, it looks like quite a few of you guys are there. So we're going to go ahead and get looking at it. Um, we're going to listen to the background information and who the author is first. So um, turn the volume all the way up, which means that you guys at home might want to turn it down a little bit just in case it's really loud. Um, we're going to start with the background information. I'm going to play that in three, two, one. The Girl Who Gets Gifts from Birds by Katie Sewell. News article. Background. Crows are glossy black birds found all over the world. As scavengers, they will eat almost anything. They live in large, close-knit families. Crows are considered to be some of the smartest animals on the planet, and they are able to use simple tools and solve puzzles. About the author. Katie Sewell is a radio producer and host. She worked as the lead producer and occasional host of Weekday with Steve Share at KUOW Public Radio, NPR Seattle, for 11 years. She enjoys studying the golden age of radio. Sewell currently lives in Rome, Italy, where she co-hosts a podcast about living abroad called The Bittersweet Life. Okay. So, that didn't give us a whole lot of information about what this article is going to be about, but we can gather that it's going to be about crows, right? What did it tell us about crows? in the background information. What sort of things do we know about crows now? Or just think about what you know about crows. They're um, big birds. They're they can be pretty big. What else? Charlie, I heard you start to say something. They're smart. They are pretty smart. One of the smartest animals on the planet, it says. They use simple tools and they can solve puzzles. Do you guys know what um, a group of crows is called? Have you ever heard of that? Do you know? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scavengers? No. They're, um, they are scavengers, right? They'll eat almost anything. But a group of crows, if you see them flying around, is called a murder. So like a murder of crows. 
an interesting name for that's them. That's a weird name. I know. I don't know why they got that name, but that's what they're called. So there's our background information and stuff. I'm going to hide this part. Um, for making meaning today, we're going to do what we did last time uh, on Monday as well, where we only do the first read chart. So just like we have been doing, we'll read through the article first, and then we have the questions to answer. We'll kind of work on them together, talk about just kind of get our ideas out instead of doing it all alone, okay? So we're going to go ahead and listen to the article. It's about seven minutes long. I might stop in the middle, do a little bit of a check to make sure you guys are understanding it, um, but we'll see, okay? So I'm going to start it in three, two, one. The Girl Who Gets Gifts from Birds by Katie Sewell. Eight-year-old Gabby Mann sets a bead storage container on the dining room table and clicks the lid open. This is her most precious collection. You may take a few close looks, she says, but don't touch. It's a warning she's most likely practiced on her younger brother. She laughs after saying it, though. She is happy for the audience. Inside the box are rows of small objects in clear plastic bags. One label reads, Black Table by Feeder, 2.30 p.m., November 9, 2014. Inside is a broken light bulb. Another bag contains small pieces of brown glass worn smooth by the sea. Beer-colored glass, as Gabby describes it. Each item is individually wrapped and categorized. Gabby pulls a black zip out of a labeled bag and holds it up. We keep it in as good condition as we can, she says, before explaining this object is one of her favorites. There's a miniature silver ball, a black button, a blue paper clip, a yellow bead, a faded black piece of foam, a blue Lego piece, and the list goes on. Many of them are scuffed and dirty. It is an odd assortment of objects for a little girl to treasure, but to Gabby, these things are more valuable than gold. She didn't gather this collection. Each item was a gift given to her by crows. She holds up a pearl-colored heart. It is her most prized present. It's showing me how much they love me. Gabby's relationship with the neighborhood crows began accidentally in 2011. She was four years old and prone to dropping food. She'd get out of the car and a chicken nugget would tumble off her lap. A crow would rush in to recover it. Soon the crows were watching for her, hoping for another bite. As she got older, she rewarded their attention by sharing her packed lunch on the way to the bus stop. Her brother joined in. Soon, crows were lining up in the afternoon to greet Gabby's bus, hoping for another feeding session. Gabby's mother, Lisa, didn't mind that crows consumed most of the school lunches she packed. I like that they love the animals and are willing to share, she says, while admitting she never noticed crows until her daughter took an interest in them. It was a kind of transformation. I never thought about birds. All right, so, so far, we have a young girl named Gabby. Did they talk about how old she was at this point? I don't think they said that. Around four or five. Yeah. They only oh, is this a true story? Um, it's a news article, so I'm assuming it's a true story, yes. Um, but she was about four or five when she started dropping the food. It doesn't say how old she is now. Um, so we don't really know for sure. I guess she'd be six. Maybe. I don't know. Well, maybe it'll tell us near the end. But what kind of relationship does she have with these crows? Feeding them food and stuff. Yeah, she feeds them food. At the beginning, it says how old she is, and then it goes back to, like, how it started, but now it's resuming. Does it but say how old? At the beginning, oh, it does. Yeah. Eight-year-old eight Gabby. Seven. Yep, right here at the very beginning. Eight-year-old Gabby. So this has kind of been going on for about three or four years. So she dropped her food when she's younger, and the crows start to learn, if I hang around this girl we get food. So that kind of starts like a nice relationship with them. Um, 
and now she gets gifts from them. So maybe she gives them food and in return they give her random pieces of things. What sort of stuff is in her collection? What did it say? Paragraph five has a good list. Uh, a miniature silver ball, a black button, a blue paper clip, a yellow bead, and a faded black piece of foam. A blue Lego piece, and it just keeps mm -hmm. going. So it sounds like he's got a lot of stuff collected, right? Um, but she didn't get it all. And the, you know what ha probably happened? The birds probably brought, since she was feeding the birds, they probably brought something to, for her in return from probably. the birds who were feeding them. Probably. The background information talked about how smart crows can be. So maybe they understand that, like, okay, Gabby's giving us stuff, so we're going to give her something in return that she might need. Does she need these things, though, really? No, but she thinks of no. it as a gift from them, probably. Probably, right? When it's just a trade. Good. So that's kind of where we're at so far. Gabby gets gifts from crows because she accidentally started feeding them and now feeds them on purpose. And we are on paragraph 11 now. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going from there. Paragraph 11. In 2013, Gabby and Lisa started offering food as a daily ritual rather than dropping scraps from time to time. Each morning, they fill the backyard bird bath with fresh water and cover bird feeder platforms with peanuts. Gabby throws handfuls of dog food into the grass. As they work, crows assemble on the telephone lines, calling loudly to them. It was after they adopted this routine that the gifts started appearing. The crows would clear the feeder of peanuts and leave shiny trinkets on the empty tray. An earring, a hinge, a polished rock. There wasn't a pattern. Gifts showed up sporadically. Anything shiny and small enough to fit in a crow's mouth. One time it was a tiny piece of metal with the word best printed on it. I don't know if they still have the part that says friend, Gabby laughs, amused by the thought of a crow wearing a matching necklace. When you see Gabby's collection, it's hard not to wish for gift-giving crows of your own. If you want to form a bond with a crow, be consistent in rewarding them, advises John Marsluff, professor of wildlife science at the University of Washington. He specializes in birds, particularly crows and ravens. What food is best? A few peanuts in the show, he says. It's a high energy food, and it makes noise when you throw it on the ground, so they hear it and they quickly habituate to your routine. Marsluff and his colleague, Mark Miller, did a study of crows and the people who feed them. They found that crows and people form a very personal relationship. There's definitely a two way communication going on there, Marsluff says. They understand each other's signals. The birds communicate by how they fly, how close they walk, and where they sit. The human learns their language, and the crows learn their feeders' patterns and posture. They start to know and trust each other. Sometimes a crow leaves a gift. But crow gifts are not guaranteed. I can't say they always will give presents, Marsluff admits, having never received any gifts personally but I have seen an awful lot of things crows have brought people. Not all crows deliver shiny objects either. Sometimes they give the kind of presents they would give to their mate, says Marsluff. Courtship feeding, for example. To some people, their presents are dead baby birds that the crow brings in. Gabby has been given some icky objects. Her mother threw out a rotting crab claw, for example. Gabby points out a heavily rusted screw she prefers not to touch. It's labeled third favorite. Asking her why an untouchable object is in the favorite, she answers, you don't see a crow carrying around a screw that much, unless it's trying to build its house. Lisa, Gabby's mom, regularly photographs the crows and charts their behavior and interactions. Her most amazing gift came just a few weeks ago when she lost a lens cap in a nearby alley while photographing a bald eagle as it circled over the neighborhood. She didn't even have to look for it. It was sitting on the edge of the birdbath. Had the crows returned it? Lisa logged onto her computer and pulled up their bird cam. There was the crow she suspected. 
you can see it bringing it into the yard, walks it to the bird bath, and actually spends time rinsing this lens cap. I'm sure that it was intentional. She smiles. They watch us all the time. I'm sure they knew I dropped it. I'm sure they decided they wanted to return it. All righty. So there's our news article. Um, I thought it was cool when they brought a piece of metal that said best on it. That is pretty cool. It's Maybe like it they can read. Yeah. It's like they can read. That, that would be cool. Maybe. We can't really tell. The only animal with a superpower. Yeah. Maybe those researchers will research one day if crows can read stuff. I enjoyed the um, the voice that the lady did whenever she was talking in the man's voice. It was, it was like, whoa, <laughs> she got deep. But that's beside the point. Um, so, I mean, there's not a whole lot else to go over. We might as well just go right on into our first read. Um, were all of the objects good things, though? Did, did they always bring awesome objects? No. 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 Like dead birds or or claws or stuff that's yeah. kind of you wouldn't want to pick up yeah they're not always great things but you know it's still the but to the bird it's still he's still trying to be nice yeah With the bird, it's like the most precious thing it's yeah the thought that counts yep good awesome guys so we are going to go ahead and the only thing we're going to do today um we'll just finish it out we'll probably end a little bit early is under making meaning, we're gonna do the first read chart. Um, nothing else, just the first read, just to kind of get a grasp of the story and make sure we understood it. So let's go ahead and open that up and add our title. Um, but from who gets this from Miss Jones, you could copy and paste it. Can you? Yeah, I've been doing that. That's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that title down. Yeah, I'll give you a minute to get there. I accidentally clicked out of the thing. That's all right. All right, we're going to do it box by box again, just to kind of work together on it, make sure we understand the story. Tomorrow, we're going to split into the groups again and do those 10 questions like we did yesterday. Um, some of you guys will be with Mr. Turner and some of you guys will be with me. And we'll do some questions with it again. All right. Our first box here is our notice box. So like the general ideas of our story. What was this story about? So let's start with that. What is our news article about? And who is it about? We can probably do that all in one sentence. What and who? Crows and the girls? And the girls. Okay, so we have the girl. What was her name? Gabby. Yep, a girl named Gabby. Um what does she do with the crows? Uh, give them food. Good. A girl named Gabby feeds the crows. And what do they do in return? Give her gifts. Good. Perfect. You can write exactly what I type out, or if you would like, you can put it in your own words. But we just need one sentence there. What's it about, and who is it about? And I think that this sentence answers both. If you want to add more details about what the gifts are, that's fine. Um, if you want to add more details about who else is involved, because they talk about some researchers. They also talk about um, Gabby's mom, Lisa. So if you want to add more detail, go for it. And it also talks about her little brother, too. Mm -hmm. Do they ever say her little brother's name? I no. No, I don't think so. No. Okay. 
I'll go ahead and give you guys a minute to fill out that box. I'm gonna check my attendance really quick. You went to NAU, right? NAU? Yeah, I did go there. You want to talk about the crows there? <laughs> Is this a true story? Um, from Mr. Turner or the one that we're reading? The one that we're reading. I didn't even yes. hear the story. Uh, yes, we. This is a true story. Is your story good? You want to tell them? I don't care if you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Yeah, crows are so smart. I don't know how that would... Yeah, because all the buses at NAU look exactly the same. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I was there. I graduated in 2017, so... But I didn't ride the buses near the end anymore. <laughs> Maybe. I have no idea. I took it from north to south a lot, I guess. Or south to north. But... I guess they all do that, don't they? Most of them. Uh huh. Yep. It depended on what I was doing that day. If I needed to get somewhere quick, I'd ride the bus. But most of the time, I walked around. That's how I got my exercise. <laughs> yeah. True. Or if there was a lot of people trying to take the buses. <laughs> yeah, just like that. I wonder. Well, I guess there's not that many kids at NAU right now. I guess I wonder how they're doing buses right now. If they have it distanced or not, but they've got a cord off um for like the first four or five rows behind the driver. Mm -hmm. They've got a ribbon across them. You can't get any closer to the driver. Okay. So they're only using the back doors on the buses. Interesting. So I've got a daughter that drives bus up there. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Okay. We got sidetracked. That's fine though. <laughs> Annotating. We're gonna do the second box. Hopefully you guys did the first box all the way. Plenty of time to finish up that sentence. Um we need to mark up a few things in your story. Um, I'm not going to close out of this box. Eh. You know what? Maybe I will. I wonder if I can copy this. Let's see. Copy. Okay. So I will close out of it. We need to go back through our story, and I want you guys to take maybe two or three minutes and just highlight anything that is important. So if you think that Gabby being eight years old is important, then we'll highlight that. So Take a couple of minutes, go back through, and I'll ask a few of you guys to let me know what you highlighted, what um, paragraph, and what sentence. So, highlight two things that you think are important to this news article. Okay? Okay, I highlighted two important things. All right, we're going to do about uh, two more minutes, and then we will get a couple of people's ideas about what they highlighted. If you're already done, just sit tight.
Have you ever been to Seattle? Yeah. Oh yeah, we should talk about that. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, we lived in Tacoma, so going to Seattle was the same thing. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I never went on a ferry that I know of. I should though. Mm-hmm. Watch, look at everything. Yeah. I lived right near um, Puget Sound, so we'd go down to Puget Sound a lot. And uh, the whales breaching every once in a while it was pretty cool. Yeah. But. Yeah. Krispy Kreme donuts are the best. I should have bought some. I know. That's why I don't like when they do the fundraisers here with Krispy Kreme. That's why I don't like to get them because it's not the hot donuts. But... Yeah. Agreed. Alrighty, guys. Those of you um, that have highlighted some things, who has one that I could highlight? I do. All right, Donna. What, what paragraph is it in first, so I can get there? Twenty-one. Paragraph twenty-one. And right. it's the one that says, "Wait, here. Let me see it again. Let me go back to my notebook." Okay, I found it. So it says, "But where it says, but I've seen an awful lot of things, but." Crows have brought people because it crows bring people stuff. So it kind of talks about how crows just bring people things. Like if you give them yeah. food or anything, they might bring you something in return. I don't know if I would um, encourage you guys to try it though. You never know how a crow is. I'm gonna, gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Me too. It I'm gonna it. I'm gonna make some popcorn and if I see a, a crow in the tree, I'm gonna throw it at him and see if he comes down and gets it. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Don't get attacked by a crow, please. I'll be prepared. I have one. All right. Go ahead, Charlie. What did you find? What paragraph, paragraph 14. Paragraph what? Sorry. 14. 14? All righty. What would you highlight? Everything. Everything. So there's not uh, – the crows um, would get all of the peanuts that they left out, and then they would leave things in return, right? But not always. So this word sporadically means that it doesn't happen all the time. I want this to go away. Why is it not showing up? Sporadically means that it happens here and there, not every day. So not every time that they fed them did they leave something new, but every once in a while they'd get a nice new trinket. Anybody else have anything that we should highlight that they found important? <laughs> I highlighted the f that first sentence you told us. The first sentence as well. Cool. That like one. It. Awesome. Um, so you have something too? What'd you get? You said it was in paragraph six. Paragraph six. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I like that. She didn't get the collection herself. It was all given to her by crows. Awesome. I think all of those are some really good things. Good job. I also um, highlighted paragraph eight. Paragraph eight, that it began accidentally. Mm-hmm. Cool. Awesome. Those are all great ideas. Everything on paragraph eight, because I don't have a specific thing to highlight. Cool. I'm just going to highlight that first one. But okay. overall, those are some good things for you guys to highlight. Good job on that section. Let's go ahead and open this back up. I'm going to retype this really quick. Girl who gets gifts from birds and then on the annotate we highlighted two important things from the news article so we've done notice and annotate and then let's go ahead and scroll down to connections this is where we're going to throw out some ideas of how we might be able to connect to this story so if we've read something similar or you've had a similar experience or watched a movie. I've dropped a chicken got? nugget. I've dropped a chicken nugget. <laughs> we've all dropped chicken nuggets. Good. Did something eat it or you just dropped it? I dropped it and ate it. <laughs> okay. 
What else you guys got? That's funny. There's one thing that it's not connecting to the story, but one time we were at this uh, guy who cooked something in front of you, and he threw a shrimp up way in the air. I was going to try to catch it in my mouth. It fell on the floor, and I picked it up and ate it. Oh, man. Out of the restaurant? Out of the restaurant. <laughs> Is it one of those? Um, it, They're called tapenaki. They, uh, it, was, it was a hibachi grill. Yeah. I went yeah. to one of those. I don't know. I've been to a lot of them growing up. I always enjoy those, but... They do that. They put it on their spatula, right? And they flick it towards you, and you gotta catch it in your mouth. Yeah, who are really kind of like that? that. It's like a hidden talent. Like honestly, like if someone does that, I'm really good at catching it. So, yeah. Okay, so Phil has one eating a steak, and it fell off your fork, and your friend's dog ate it. So basically, we're all dropping things, and animals eat them. My dog loves to eat things that I drop. What about any connections? Same to- with mine, like the little Shih Tzu that I have. He'll yes. sit by my mom on the table and just watch her eat every single bite. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah. My dog does the same thing. What about any connections? Mike to- won't give me a dead mouse as a present. Say that again. My cat gave me a dead mouse as my present. <sighs> hey, yeah, cats will do that. So animals giving presents is another connection. Um, Mr. Turner and I talked about how at NAU, if you've ever been up to Flagstaff, have you guys ever seen how big and massive the crows are there? Yeah. Yeah. They're like more than a foot wide. They're like, they're bigger than, they're taller than a foot and wider than more than six inches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're massive at NAU. I think it's because they live near all the food or something. I don't know. Oh, those are the buff crows who spend their time exercising. That, that might be it. Mr. Turner just said that they might have been ravens instead. They look similar, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Aren't uh, ravens smaller, though? I have no idea. Oh. Crows are smaller than ravens. Mr. Oh, Turner cool. is always correct. <laughs> um, but him and I were talking about how an NAU bus driver um, used to feed crows feed crows at a certain bus stop and they knew exactly what the bus looked like even though all the buses at NAU look exactly the same and they always like flocked towards that bus because he always fed those crows no matter who was driving the bus but it was always the same bus is kind of similar to this story a little bit so the bus driver used uh, used to feed Crows at a bus stop, and they always returned. Okay. Any other connections you guys might have that we can connect this to? I can't think of anything else. No? Anyone else? I'll give you guys a second. I kind of think crows act like people sometimes because you'll see them walking on the side rocks or, like, (laughs) bouncing along. Uh Uh-huh. I always think that's funny. They are pretty. They're smart, so they they kind of make. I wonder if you could give a crow a puzzle and he'd solve it. Maybe you could become a scientist and let us know later in life if they do that. Maybe. Yeah. All right. If you guys have any other connections and you can think of anything else that you could connect it to, feel free to write that in that box. Um, And then the last thing we're going to do today is this respond section. Um, This is the one where all you're going to do is complete the section by writing two to three sentence summary. So please write a two to three sentence summary of the news article. So just two or three sentences telling me what this article was about. I'm going to have you guys do this one on your own because we've talked a lot about the article. And I think that you guys can write your two to three sentences to finish up this response. Um, And yes, once you finish up those four boxes, that's all we're doing for this assignment. Um, You can turn it in if you want. We're going to use the story tomorrow. So you can always wait until after we're done using the story. But you guys can head out when we are done. Um, I'll stay on until 9 o'clock still so you guys can hang out until 9. Did we do the comprehension check on the last one? 
No, there actually is okay. not a comprehension check. Okay. I mean, uh, the whatever it was called. The... Nope. All we're okay. doing is the first read chart. So just this chart with the four boxes is all we're doing for these stories this week. Yeah. Okay. We should do this every week. Um, we're going to do it next week, too. And then after that, we're going to start writing uh, an essay. So we'll have a very similar week next week.